Judas Priest. Some old JP, we're back. Judas Priest. Dreamer. Deceiver. It's from the second Judas Priest album, Sad Wings of Destiny, released in 1976. This live recording is from 1975, way before all the leather stuff. That's good to know, because I, I do know Judas Priest as having a lot of leather stuff. Wither Voice, we talked about this. You must behave. Dude, wait, this is Rob, this is good old Bobby H, what, you can tell his face is the same, what a sweet voice, man, so you're saying this is before drugs, alcohol, rigorous touring, they killed the vocal consistency, well, I think, you know, what 50 years of all that stuff would do is kind of put your voice into a box that that doesn't really allow for a lot of flexibility. So, yeah. I think I think the biggest loss would be the flexibility of all that stuff. Um I think you can just type Q. Yeah. Um damn. All right, I need I need to reset my brain for this cuz that was not what I was expecting. This is gorgeous. It's like the complete opposite type of singing than what he did later. Like this is so released, so reliant on release, so reliant on the breath. It's it's really actually, it's so gorgeous. He was a little flat on one of the high notes, but like I don't even mind because of how easy the entire line was. Oh, hello, hello Norway. Sorry that you're closed. <laughs> yeah. We followed the dream of through the purple hazy cloud. You can hear the influence from all of those like early rock, you know, 60s, 70s rock bands. Earlier stuff, right? But it's it has such a he's got such a core timbre, like an amazingly consistent core timbre in his voice that is just so exciting. It, when like right now when he's opening up, that core timbre is what's allowed him to maintain everything is voice over the course of the time that he has, even with all of the stuff, creating a core sound that, or it's creating a sound that has quote unquote core in it, which is something I don't talk about enough here and on the clinic and stuff. 
core tone, right? Core tone is the is basically the sign that you're singing healthily. Regardless of the feeling, like core tone is the sound that corresponds to healthy phonation. And when he opens up his voice, you hear it so clearly. And that's what's carried him, no doubt. I mean, this is obviously speculation, but I have no doubt that that's what's carried him so far in his career, is the ability to always maintain core tone like this. Of mine. Said in the cosmos is a single sonic sound that is The on. On! On! I can't even get to that amount of clarity. It's such a... You, you can hear it, though. It's almost like distortion, but it's not, right? There's nothing interfering with the sound. That's core tone, right? And that's kind of the hardest thing to get to technically, though it's not super hard to get to. It just requires a lot of... You have to be, A, warmed up, and B, you have to be on your air. You have to be aligned. You have to have all of those like little technical building blocks in place, and then you get to core tone. And you guys know I love hearing great singers who are like legends today at the earlier stages because you can track things like those small factors in their voice that carried them into a career of like legendary proportions like Rob Halford who looks like a little like skinny hippie boy here <laughs> he would see our minds were Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> oh. And from the bat, he's he's using that. It's it's such smart technique. I don't know what his training is, if any, but his technique is so well aligned. And usually with singers later on who are still this like well aligned in their technique, usually you they didn't start that way. Eh, sometimes they did. Um, but that forward placement for those super high notes, I would say above B above B four. Yeah, I mean high G, dude, this guy. Um it's 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 just placed so perfectly. Never took any lessons, probably couldn't afford them. Fair enough. I mean, yeah. Um it, it, the he the placement, I'm sure he found it out of necessity or however he found it, it doesn't matter. It's just so clean and crisp there. That again the the uh, the registration when you're going for notes is the most important thing. So when he's singing up there, the registration is he's uh, the vocal mode he's singing, the vocal gear. You know, if your if your voice is a car, the gear is placing that sound forward here in the mask. Um, it really is absolutely imperative for singing notes up there for any male voice. And he does it this he does it exactly the same here as he does like you know. 45 years later, 40 years later, I don't even know. Um, yeah. He worked at a theater in his late teens and early 20s. 
was around a, a lot of opera and musical theater. Yeah, okay, that's cool. I mean, I'm sure. See, like, as a as a you know someone who also works with a lot of singers, I learned the most from talking about singing with with other singers, not necessarily from voice lessons. Voice lessons have their purpose, and you do things there that you can't get anywhere else. But I, you know, you learn the most as a singer by you know basically talking shop with other singers, um, which is almost like it's a really like. In, engaging thing to do. Anyway, I, I that would all be speculation in this case because I don't know. But the placement's the same here as it was as it is years down the line, and I think that's just really inspiring. We are lost above. so much core tone in there right so he's also what he's also not doing is he's not compartmentalizing his voice to like one register so it, this is kind of oxymoronic it's kind of backwards than what i said earlier the registration is important but you also want to maintain qualities of all the other registers in each register so when you're singing that high g5 you are placing the sound you're 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 allowing that sound to be dominated by that higher masky forward registration but you still want to feel even just the slightest quality of chest resonance, of mixed mask resonance, of everything else, so that you can go back and forth between all of them, right? And that's what he does. There is not a moment where the entire voice isn't present, right? But when he goes up super high, you can tell it's it's very much so in that laser point focused forward sound. When he goes into the middle, he he you clearly hear when it shifts into that mask dominant sound when i know mask and like forward the way i'm describing them are very similar but they're di they're different feelings and then as he goes down you hear the chest dominate but throughout the whole range you hear qualities of all of that the hardest part is maintaining the higher qualities that forwardness and that maskiness when you're singing low but that's what allows for you to go up and down as you need to as long as you have breath that supports it g5 i think for this for like rock and metal I think G5 is definitely that that metal note, that money note. Absolutely. Because Yarko was doing it yesterday. Uh who else was doing it? Our our guy from uh Anubis Gate. And uh yeah, Rob Halford's doing it. It's it's a really because it's when you're in that ah, when you're in that really forward place, that's that's where the it kind of blossoms, you know, when you have like a true tenor sound, uh, is that G five. Yeah, and it's interesting because the G5, kind of an octave below that, works the same way, just in a different a different dominant register. Right. Anyway, continuing. I think it's pretty standard for this genre to have ranges, vocal ranges that ex that are around four octaves. Uh, that's big. One, two, three. I would say three. I mean, I guess you could go low, and you can go higher than that. It's it, but I don't see notes above G five. Like once you get, once you get to like A five above that, for the male voice can get pretty iffy. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. So like C six. Fine. Um. 
All right, yeah, that's a good range. Because I would say anything above C6 to the ear, it would just get, like, it would be weird in the ear. <laughs> yeah, it would be hard. I, I, uh, yeah, but, like, I, and I think here's the thing, like, you can access notes above that, and you can figure out notes above that, but it has to match your music, right? Like, the squeaky, the super squeaky high notes work for the stuff that Dimash does because it's it the music is composed in a way that kind of allows for that vocal flexibility, like the that guy Ego or Kruko, Krukoi, uh, whatever. He writes music that allows for that vocal line to kind of go wherever it needs to go, where it wants to go, to show the voice. It's like Rossini. It's like modern Rossini. Um, whereas, like, it wouldn't really fit in here because the, the timbre would change so much. And that goes for anyone singing notes like that. Um, yeah. Like, you wouldn't want to hear those... Stuff like this. so good like it's so intense you know that intensity that you hear is intensity necessary for sustaining this kind of richness in the metal timbre in the middle voice like you know we just kind of had a little segue about range but to me this consistency of middle voice intensity is the really impressive thing that's just like that pure rawness in the sound that he can maintain on all the notes he sings. You know, I don't, yeah, sure. Okay, he only goes up to a G5. Okay. But, like, if that's anything anyone ever says. But it's the sound you make on those notes, right? That is really compelling. To me. To me. To my ear. We're all different. But to me, that's the, that's the money right there. That's why he can do that. That's why he can just jump up to to whatever that was. Yep, C three or E three uh, yeah, E five E five. Um, so much power and yeah, there's a lot of power and weight in those notes. And what what's difficult about that is the you is bringing the energy to them. So and he can do that in all in a you know in a C three just as well as he can do it in a as an E5. Those are like an octave and a couple notes away from each other for reference. I love his outfit. It's so sick. I wonder what these like 70s microphone wizard staffs were all about. Cause Freddy had one too.
Yeah, Donut Man, you nailed it. I agree. It's all breath support, right? <laughs> Maybe a penis thing? <laughs> Maybe. But it's all breath support, right? It's... You, the vibrato is the result of, like, the the breath energy being, it, like, exploded out, right? <sighs> it's so... Man, it's so raw. And the... That vowel is so good for letting the, the the sound resonate. Oh gosh, it's not. It doesn't sound easy, right? It doesn't sound. It doesn't sound easy, and it's probably not easy. But that's why we like listening to it because it has a donut man. Exactly what you said. That aggression. That that power. That power and aggression behind it. And that's what we do. That's the valley singing it on. When you sing it up there, it sounds oh, it's so crisp. When you have it in that right placement, and you can have the right amount of breath energy underneath it, it can go there without tiring you out. You just keep the sound placed forward. That's how I know I'm warmed up when the sound feels like it's here instead of here. Uh, and I think that that idea will correspond to a lot of others. What other other singers will say. All right, let's do it one more time. Listen to this little riff at the end and let it let it end. Don't you want So sick. So awesome. Hey, you're still here. I hope you enjoyed that look into what we do on Twitch to celebrate great singers. You know, I owe you a huge thank you for being a part of this awesome community and letting me share my love of singing with you guys. The growth on this channel has been absolutely immense. And while I can't read every single comment requesting reactions, here's what you can do to get your favorite songs featured on the channel. You've got three options. One is to join the Twitch stream Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. When you've logged into Twitch and are watching the live stream, you can type exclamation point react, followed by the URL of your requested video. This adds your song to the queue that we work through during live streams. Alternatively, if you're really in a rush to get me to react to your song, you can head to my tipping page in the description down below and request a song with a tip of $4 or more to get it seen ahead of all the non-tipped requests. Don't worry, I make sure that every dollar gets put towards improving the channel's content and the community. The third way to get your request up on the channel is to join my Patreon. A patron of any tier level can request a song and get it reacted to that month, guaranteed. There are tons of other fun perks too, so I hope you check it out anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you feel closer to the human voice and the artists you love, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Ciao. Tip trick voice. <laughs> you. Are you so cute? Oh, thank you. Oh, that's so cute.